So Madeleine in the Boîte d'Amour. So um, this room, so it's kind of a mix, um, but this is uh, the group that usually is associated, well, partly associated with uh, the Nabi movement. Uh, so well, even using the term movement is maybe a bit of an exaggeration for it. But the Nabi are these painters I mentioned earlier that, that gathered together for a couple summers in Bretagne, and particularly in the little town of pont -Aven. And so they would, they would come from Paris, right? Everyone was based in Paris, and they would come together and, and make uh, paintings in this, I don't know if it's right to call it a traditional uh, village in, in Bretagne. But you see, for example, there's, this is a Gauguin painting in the back, and this is La Belle Angèle. And one of the things that you'll see in some of these, uh, you see it a little bit, so on this painting uh, here as well as that one, you see the women wearing their white sort of hats. Um, and sometimes this is misunderstood as, as the women being religious, like nuns, for example, that they're part of the church and so on, when in fact it's, it's more of a traditional style of dress, right, that doesn't necessarily imply, it may, may imply a sort of religious associations, but they're not working for the church in any way. <clears throat> so why don't we come back here to the Medlin, uh, just to kind of talk about it, because it's, it's one that, of this room, it kind of strikes me uh, especially. So what, <clears throat> what do you make of this, this painting here? It's she's daydreaming. She's daydreaming, okay. What, what makes you say that she's daydreaming? Uh, she looks very thoughtful. Okay. She's looking upwards. Okay. Yeah, so there is this sense that she's well, you could even imagine that she's, well, maybe she's examining the trees and the leaves and the trees, but it, in a way it doesn't seem like she's really focused particularly on one thing. That I agree with you. There is this sense that she's looking, but she seems to be more in her own world. And I think that that is a really crucial aspect of this painting. Is there, is there anything else maybe that jumps out of that, the painting, that, that might seem strange? So for some of you, when I wrote responses to the, the little essays that you wrote, I suggested that sometimes a good starting point, not every painting does this, but sometimes a good starting point is to look for something in it that's, that's sort of strange or weird, right, that seems odd to you, and to ask yourself, well, what's that all about, and then kind of proceed from there. So is there anything, so I don't know if we would say that her daydreaming is strange, but it jumps out, right, the, the look on her face, that seems a little bit uh, different, for example, than what we see in this painting, which has less precision, maybe. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. So that's definitely a good observation, right? So there's. It seems incongruous that she should be dressed with these kind of dainty little shoes when she's in the middle of the forest. So that I think is is interesting. Is there anything else that seems uh, maybe off about the painting? Um, the pink grass. Okay. Okay. So this is an interesting thing. So we're kind of jumping ahead in some respects. So our date here is 1888. All right, so there's a lot of stuff happening right around this time. And we're going to see some other Gauguin and especially some Van Gogh paintings that are happening at the same time. And the color palette is starting to expand. Right? So this is one of the traits of, that uh, generally we're going to associate more with the post-impressionist than the impressionist. Right? All the impressionists that we just saw. So yeah, the color palette is going to kind of change a little bit. And this is really an interesting thing is that we talked about, for example, there was the painting we looked at, talked a little bit about last two weeks ago of Monet, of the haystacks. And I mentioned that the haystacks themselves were kind of these yellow, sort of orangey colors, and the shadows were more bluish and purple. Right? And this is the impressionists are starting to learn, right, from the studies of the Chevreul, uh, who did these, these had advanced these new theories about color and how it worked and so on and are going to show that, that they don't necessarily need to work with black ink to show shadows, that, that shadows sometimes are just, they work with color complements, right? So that if there's a yellow light source, that the shadows are going to be the color complement of that yellow color. Sorry we lost you all these little zigzags in there. Um, the, um, so the color is going to, start to expand out. So already the Impressionists are going to be less than conventional in how they deal with color, but for the most part they're still trying to present colors uh, that they see in front of themselves. Right? What's going to happen with the Nabi and the, some of the symbolist painters 
and especially Van Gogh and Gauguin, is that they're going to start to use color. They're not going to feel the same kind of need to always be representational. So we're talking about this one and how, uh, trying to get a sense of what's going on with this painting. Right? So uh, <clears throat> Alina mentioned that there's a kind of daydreaming quality to, to the woman. And Sophia mentioned that the shoes seem maybe a little bit unconventional for being in the middle of a forest. Is there anything else that, that jumps out that, that seems maybe strange? Go ahead, Marianne. I don't know what you see, but it looks like in the very background, mm -hmm. On the side of the river? Yeah, on the other side of the river. It looks like the jungle. Okay. But on, the, on this side, okay. it looks like the forest. Okay. So when you say jungle, you mean like more of a tropical kind of? Yeah. Okay. So it's almost like there's a different sort of environment. I think that there's, yeah, it's, it's inconclusive, but as you mentioned that, there's, you know, some of these, the leaf shapes, you're like, was that more like palm tree kind of thing or some different sort of plant? So I think that there's something about what you're saying there that, that may be playing uh, a role in the painting. Anything else that seems... The river, uh, how the, river. the reflections in it yeah. and so on. So, yeah, I think there's, there's, a, uh, there's a kind of a weirdness, right, in how it's... We can kind of believe it, but there's another way in which it doesn't... I don't know, it seems maybe too defined in a way, right? This is kind of... Strange, uh, strange quality. That anything else that seems okay? Yeah, it is a bit weird to be cropped that way, right? It just seems like yeah, it's like it's a hand laying on her stomach instead of connected to her own body. Uh, what about the relationship between her and the environment? She doesn't look like she's scared. relaxed. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know, like this is just a theory that she just got pregnant and she went to the, to the forest just to right, right. make her mind. Yeah, so kind of clear her head. The thing that strikes me about her is she looks too big. I don't know if anyone else has this impression. She looks like she's out of scale for the painting. Uh, she seems like, I mean, it's a little bit like what we saw with Déjeuner sur l'air, right? The woman in the background looked too big for how far back she was, right? It seemed like she should be smaller to represent that different distance. And here, while well, the fact that she's close to us, she should be the biggest uh, here. But there's a way in which the scale, like, somehow this feels like it represents a much bigger distance than, than we're getting. So for me, <clears throat> this strange, um, what seems out of scale quality of the painting reinforces this idea of her daydreaming, her being in her own world. And so it's almost as if we see her in the background and this background, we see her in the foreground rather, and the background is maybe a bit stylized, a bit strange, maybe because the plants are different, the reflections in the water are a bit different. And so could this be that the background functions almost like a representation of her own thoughts. Right? This is maybe a big jump, but there's a way in which it feels uh, strange. Right? And that, that may be one explanation of the strangeness, that she's in her own world, and we're seeing a sort of projection of that world, that thought. Like it's, it could be like a memory of hers. Right? It's like, oh yeah, I remember when I was by that river kind of thing. Right? So it's sort of an interesting... Uh, uh, sort of direction that he takes. It doesn't make it seem, you know, it's, it's like, it's sort of like Alice in Wonderland, right? There's, it's like she's this big being that's surrounded by these things that seem like they're a little bit smaller than she, she should be, okay?